pray for prayers. Lord, it's our desire that you make us to grow and to go to our higher ground to manifest and to show forth your glory. Papa, do this for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As we want to go to examine your word, we ask that you will enlighten the hearts of our understanding Amen. to behold wondrous things in your word, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. At the end of this message, O oh God, let our lives be transformed to the glory and honor of your holy name Amen. and the blessings to be ours. For we pray in the name of God the Father, Amen. the Son, Amen. and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of the Most High God, I welcome every one of us once again. And I pray that the presence of God will not elude us today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The theme for our meditation is manifesting his glory. That is manifesting the glory of God and the sub-theme is spiritual growth. The implication of this theme is telling us that for us to be able to manifest the glory of God, we must first of all grow in the spirit. And before we go into the text, I want us to quickly just examine the wordings of the, the theme. The first word there is manifest. Manifest in a simplistic manner is to show forth, to demonstrate, or to reveal something. And when we talk about glory, we're talking about splendor, we're talking about great beauty, we're talking about magnificence. And so when we now bring these two words together, we're talking about manifesting or showing forth or demonstrating or revealing the splendor and the greatness or the beauty or the magnificence of something. And so when we say manifesting is glory, who is the he is in the world, in the, in the theme? God. So that means what the theme is trying to tell us is that we're supposed to be showing forth or demonstrating or revealing the splendor the majesty, the great beauty, the great power of our God. Praise the Lord. And by implication, these things cannot happen except a man grows to a stage where he is now empowered to demonstrate or to manifest this glory. And honestly and sincerely, this is God's expectation for all his children you will discover that life continues to roll on year after year. We are increasing in biological age. We are increasing in one area or the other. As we are increasing in biological age and in stature, and yes, sometimes even status, God expects us as his own children to grow also in the spirit, to increase in the spirit so that we'll be able to handle greater spiritual assignments to demonstrate his glory in a greater way and in a greater dimension. Many a times, I, lo I love to give this illustration, that when God looks down on me from heaven, what is he going to see? Is he going to see this guy with graying hair and cheeky, I mean, bony cheeks and what? No, he's not going to look at me like that. He's going to see my spirit man. So I can be fat and robust, looking fresh and good on the physical. But on the inside, am I equally as glorious? Or am I looking like a malnourished, skinny, weak and dying individual? Praise the Lord. That is what concerns God the most. He's much more interested in, our, in, in the health and the well-being of our spirit man. Because if our spirit man prospers, we will definitely prosper in the physical. And so when we prosper in the physical, the glory of God will naturally be seen in our lives. And I want us to now go to our text. The second lesson that was read for us this morning, Matthew chapter 13, verses 53 through 58. Matthew 13, 53 through 58. And it came to pass. And it came to pass, yes. When Jesus had finished this parable, mm -hmm. he departed then. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue. 
in, in so much that they were astonished mm. and said, when as this man, this when as this man, this wisdom and this mighty work. Is not this the carpenter son? Is not is not his mother's called Mary and his brethren James, jo Joseph and Simon and Ju Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? When then as this this man all these things and they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not, and he did, and he, he and did, he did not, not many miracles. He did not many, many mighty works there because of their own belief. Praise the Lord. Now, this is an example of our Lord Jesus Christ here. He went to his hometown where he was born and people saw him demonstrating the glory of God through the mighty words that he was teaching them. He was exposing and he was expanding the scriptures to them to make them understand that the kingdom of God is at hand and they can enjoy the goodness of God in their lives. But instead of responding positively and accepting what he has brought, they began to castigate him. They became jealous to the extent that they refused to listen to him. And by the reason of that, he was unable to bless them. But they forgot. They were, they, they were actually jealous of the glory that they were seeing. They, in fact, I think in my own heart, they probably would have loved to be in his shoes. But because they were not there, they became jealous and they were kind of looking down on him. We knew when he was born. How come he's not so great? How come he's not so mighty? So are so many people looking at many of us today in the world, thinking, ah, but we knew when that guy was born. How come he's flourishing so well? How come he's doing so well? How come this is happening? How come that is happening? How come it is not me? But I pray every negative thought against any of our lives is canceled in the name of Jesus Christ. Our enemies will not have a hand in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. They became jealous. But unfortunately, they forgot to pay attention to what matters in the life of this young man that was preaching to them in, in, this, in that passage. And the Bible makes us to understand that Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 2, verse 40, they forgot to notice that there was a time when Jesus was a baby and he began to grow. And the scripture in Luke chapter 2, verse 40 tells us that Jesus Christ grew in stature. And the child Jesus grew and was strong in the spirit. He was filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him to the extent that he was in favor with God and with man. If, let's look at verse 51 also. Let's look at verse 51. It's more or less like a repetition. And, and, yes. And he went down with them mm -hmm. and came to Nazareth. Jesus Christ went down with his parents and came back to Nazareth. And was subject unto them. And he was subject unto them. But his mother kept all this saying in, in her heart. heart. Praise the Lord. So this scripture tells us that right under their noses, the Lord Jesus Christ was paying the price of growth. He was paying the price of glory. He was building himself. He subjected himself to his earthly parents. And he began to grow in, wisdom, in the spirit, in wisdom, in knowledge, and in favor with God and with man. In Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8, the scripture also makes up Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8. The scripture also makes us to understand that even though Jesus Christ is God from God, is God in human flesh, he learned obedience. He submitted himself in humility to his parents and learned obedience. And he grew in obedience. Little wonder the glory of God was manifested in his life. Yes? No. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8. No, he were, he were a son. Though he were a son, Yet learned, he learned, yet he learned obedience by the things which is 
he suffered. By the things which he suffered. So these people that were jealous of him in the passage that we read, forgot that Jesus had to suffer certain things in the process of being made. He submitted himself, he subjected himself to the authority of man to be proved, to be groomed, to be prepared for the glory that will later manifest in his life. To the extent that he had to submit for baptism by water. He had no sin as a human being. But he had to submit himself so that he would be able to stand in the place of sinners to be able to take away the sins of the world. If immediately after the baptism by water, he was baptized by the Holy Spirit. And in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, the scripture makes us to understand that after he had gone through all these things, God baptized him with the Holy Spirit and with power. And then he went about doing good, healing all manner of diseases and sicknesses, casting out demons and devils. This is what the people were saying. They forgot the time when the boy was struggling, I was growing, I was being beaten, I was being pruned, I was being trained. When he was rolling the, the mill, he was grinding the stones, smoothing the rough edges. They did not know that time. But when the glory now began to show, they now began to say, hey, how come? How come? Didn't we know him? People of God. The question is, when this guy was struggling, building himself from the inside out, what were they doing? Instead of now aligning with them to celebrate the glory, they began to castigate him. But I pray that the power of the enemy will not touch any of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And that is what they were saying. And that's what they were making reference to in Matthew chapter 13, verse 54. So, people of God, the point I'm trying to make here is that before the Lord Jesus Christ began to manifest the glory that these people were jealous of, he grew. Even though he was God from God, God in man, he had to follow that natural process, that natural order, that God principle, God-ordained principle of growth. He grew to become what he became. Nothing worthwhile in this world just appeared by chance. Somebody must have labored behind the scene to build it before we now begin to see it and appreciate it. Praise the Lord. So that is exactly what happened in the life of Jesus. So, and the scripture, I mean, the word of God today is now telling us that for us to be able to show forth the glory of God, we also need to do what? To grow in the spirit. We need to increase our spiritual capacity to be able to attain to that level of demonstrating the glory of God. And as we know, we know growth is in two dimensions. We have physical and spiritual growth. But today we're looking more at spiritual growth. And it is important because it's like somebody having a child. Maybe when the child was a baby, well, it's allowed he or she can crawl, can you know, do certain, all those things babies do. But at a certain age, it will be expected of the baby to begin to share certain things, certain characters, certain, certain habits, to begin to take up certain responsibilities. But when a 20-year-old child is still crawling, do you think the parents will be happy? Certainly not. The same thing with us. Many of us have given our lives to Christ five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. But still, Many are still babes in the spirit. They are not growing. And that is why it is important for us to pay attention to the word of God today. We need to grow in the spirit. We need to become adults in the spirit. I pray the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, the, there are two basic building blocks for Christian growth. I call them two basic building blocks. They are building blocks because it's the Holy Spirit that will use these building blocks to build us up. The first one is the word of God. In any meaningful Christian growth, the word of God is indispensable. You cannot do without it. It is impossible. If we look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, during the temptation of our Lord Jesus Christ, this, the Lord Jesus Christ said, man shall not live by what? By bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Yes, you want to read for us? Yes. He answered and said, but Jesus Christ answered and said, 
it is already written in Deuteronomy, I think chapter eight. Man shall not live by bread alone. That man, any human being, no human being can live by physical food alone. But by every word. But it must be complemented by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. By implication, God does not expect us to be alive physically alone. He expects us to be alive spiritually as well. That is where we can live a balanced Christian life. He expect, he is, the, the Lord Jesus Christ is telling us here that feeding this physical flesh alone is not sufficient to live a glorious life. We cannot live by feeding this flesh alone and they expect that we will be able to demonstrate the glory of God in this world. So Jesus is now saying, keep yourself physically alive and at the same time, pay due diligence to keeping yourself spiritually alive. At least for somebody to grow, it must be alive. No dead thing can grow. Once you say it is dead, it is dead, it can no longer grow. So the first stage is from the word. We must feed on the word of God to remain physically alive. And then we will not take it a notch further. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. It says, as newborn babes desire, first Peter chapter 2, verse 2, desire the sincere milk of the word so that you may grow thereby. Yes, read. First uh, Peter 2, 2. And many shall follow their, you know. Okay, this is second Peter. Two, two. As newborn babes. As people who just gave their lives to Christ. Desire the sincere milk of the world. Desire the undiluted, unpolluted milk of the world. That we may grow there. So that you may grow by it. So that you may develop in the spirit by the word. So what Jesus Christ, what do I mean? What Peter is trying to tell us here is that from the time we gave our lives to Christ, we must endlessly begin to desire the word of God. It is the word of God that we desire that will make us grow. And that brings us to the simple illustration that when a child is born, the first thing the child will be looking for is what? Breast milk. The milk to drink. Because feeding the child with milk will make the child grow. The child will derive all the necessary nourishment from the milk to grow. And so the word of God is telling us that if we must grow, we must use the word of God to keep ourselves alive and then grow by it. The second building block is prayer. Prayers, prayers, prayers. Prayers is indispensable for us to grow. Jude chapter 20. The word of the Lord says, I mean, Jude verse 20, just one chapter, Jude, Jude, Revelation. Jude 20 says, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the spirit. Yes, you want to read? Jude verse 20, yes. But you, people of God, beloved, Building up yourself. You have to be building up yourselves. You have to be growing in your most holy faith. How? By praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and praying in tongues. Praying with your understanding and praying in the Holy Spirit. It is indispensable. He's saying increase your spiritual capacity. Increase the strength of your spirit man. By what? By praying in the Holy Spirit. We're talking about spiritual growth, a precursor to the demonstration of the glory of God. So people of God, we need to inculcate in ourselves the habit of prayers. And if we look at 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10, we see the prayer of Jabez. This guy knew that the situation was not good for him. The way he was living his life, he was living below the, the standard of God for him. You want to read? Are you there? Yeah. yeah. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. 
And Jabez called on the God of Israel. And Jabez realizing that things could be better, that he is a child of glory, that he must demonstrate the glory of God. He did what? He called upon the name of the God of Israel. Saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Indeed. Indeed. And enlarge my coast. And enlarge my coast. And that thy hand. That thou your hand might be with me. And that thou wouldest keep me from. And that thou will keep me away from evil that will prevent me from demonstrating your glory. Yes. That it may not grieve me. So that it will not grieve me. And God granted. Oh, that is the beauty of it. God granted him that which he asked for. Before he said this prayer, can you please read verse 9 for me? And Jabez was more honorable. The Bible says Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Mother called his name Jabez. But despite the fact that he came with a honorable status from God, he came with that great glory from God. His mother limited the manifestation of that glory by calling him Jabez, a child of sorrow. Praise the Lord. Jabez wouldn't have been able to manifest that glory that he came into the world with. If he had not prayed, the manifestation of the glory was hindered by the pronouncement of man. God has perfected everything about Jabez. He was coming into the world as an honorable man, but his mother, out of ignorance, decided to place obstacles in his ways. But thank God that young man came to the realization that, no, this is not what God has made me to be. This is not who God has made me to be. I am made to demonstrate his glory. I am for signs and for wonders. He didn't just realize that. He took a step. And what was the step? He took his destiny into his hand and went before the hands that made the heavens and the earth. I said, no, God, you will have to bless me. Not just bless me, but bless me indeed. Bless me indeed. And after blessing me, then stop all these evils from reaching me. And the scripture says God has had one of his prayers, right? How many, sir? All his prayers. People of God, that is where we need to get to. In this world, nothing comes easy. You need to contend for what is rightly yours. I'm not saying going the extra mile. I'm not saying taking the extra hour. What is rightfully your own? You have to contend for it. And for you now to be outstanding, you have to go for extra. So they don't even want you to even exist, let alone be outstanding. And yet you have to be outstanding. So you have to contend for what God has given to you as Jabez contended for his own glory. He got his glory back and he got the extra. And today, we are still talking about him. And if you look at the place where his, his, his story was inserted, if you take time to look at it, you discover that they've been giving us the story, the, the history of the world, the genealogy. And this one gave back to this, and this one gave back to this, and this one gave back to this, and this one gave back to this. But when it came to the story of Jabez, uh, 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 oh, no. we cannot gloss over the life of this man. He did something that was unique, that was different. And they, they, they took time to show to show it to us. It, so it wasn't inserted by accident, no. They couldn't just ignore what this man did. So people of God, for us, especially those of us that are young, if you want to be noticed in this world, if you want your story to be written in gold, indelible memory to live after you, you need to live a lot of prayer. That is what is called the manifestation of the glory of God. Amen. Now, it is not enough for us to know to, to know these things that we need to grow and what we need to you to grow. We need now to deliberately begin to look into our lives as we begin to take these steps, reading the word, paying attention to the word, and then uh, prayers. We need to know the parameters or what we can begin to look at in our lives to see that we are growing in the spirit. Because we need to know, if, if I cannot measure my growth, I will be frustrated at the point. But if I say, okay, I am, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, and I'm saying, okay, growing, I'm growing, there is improvement, you will be encouraged to keep doing more. 
But if you are not measuring, you won't know whether you are still where you were last year or you have moved forward. So we need to know what we can use as parameters to determine whether we're growing or not. And it's very simple. The first thing there is how much time are you dedicating or devoting to the word of God? No child, we want to go to school. No child, naturally we say, okay, yes, mommy, tomorrow morning, wake me up, I'm excited, I want to go to school. No. But a time will come when that child will go into a higher institution away from the parents. Nobody will wake him to read in the night. Nobody will wake him in the morning to go to classes because he has grown and he has become of age to take care of him or herself. So we as Christians too, if we are growing, nobody will have to force us to do the needful, to read the word of God, to pay attention to the word of God, to settle down with it and to read it. People of God, it is a common challenge amongst every one of us. It's a very, very common challenge. Even the preacher, even myself, there are times when I will have to contend with my schedule to sit down and to read the word of God, which is more important to me, especially as a preacher. Praise the Lord. I said especially as a preacher, but necessarily as a Christian, because I have to be a Christian first before you become a preacher. Is that also? So, for it is, it is the basic, it is the bottom line for every one of us we need to sit down and read the word of God. And the level, the amount of commitment, the amount of time we spend reading and searching and researching about God is a parameter, is a pointer to the fact that, ah, this guy is thirsty. He wants to grab more and he needs, he needs to get more. He's trying to, to climb higher and higher in knowledge. Hebrews, okay, somebody could open Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 to 14, but I'll first of all want us to read 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. We've read it before, I want to reverse back to it. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, and then Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 to 14. Yes, sir. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse Thank 2. Yes, sir. And many will follow their destructive ways. Oh, sorry, did I say 2 Peter? First Peter, sorry, please. First Peter. Mama Yad has entered my mind. As newborn babes. <laughs> as newborn babes. Do what? Desire it. Desire it. Crave for it. The desire, desire the sincere milk of the word of God. That you may grow thereby. So that you may be able to grow by it. We will have to desire it. You will have to crave it. So I think we were talking about we were talking yesterday, and I was um, I was talking about Cheryl, and I think it was Daddy or Mommy that said, ah, "This one that does not eat, we have to call her to come and eat." You know, she does not desire the food, and if she is not taking it, now if not, if not because they were dragging her out to come and eat, she will begin to look emaciated and skinny. Praise the Lord. That is the way it goes. If you are not becoming more and more robust in the spirit, things that should not affect you naturally will affect you. The enemy will just be pushing you around like a pawn on the chessboard. I pray the Lord will grant us the grace to desire the sincere make of the word so that we can grow in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us look at what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 to 14. It says, when you ought to have grown to become teachers, yes, Okay. And add, and add to the altar. There are certain things the writer wanted to tell the Christians, but those things are hard work. They, they, are, they are deep mysteries of the things of God. But because these guys were dull of hearing, they are not spiritually mature to the extent that they will be able to handle these things. Because it was, as at that time, they were supposed to have grown to become teachers themselves. They still, they, they, they still have the need for them to be taught, please follow me. It is for them to have grown to become teachers of the world themselves. They still have the need to be taught the basics. Don't fight now. The word of God says you should not fight. The word of God says you should not quarrel. The word of God says you should not steal. The word of God says you should not fornicate or commit adultery. 
they are still being taught all those basic things. When they ought to have grown beyond and say, ah, when you are talking about that project, you cannot talk about Mr. So -so -so, or you cannot talk about Mr. So -so -so. He, he has grown beyond that, no way. It's like when they say, um, uh, Brahman, uh, we saw we saw the Reverend Kegi engaged in physical street fights. What do you think will come to your mind? Say, uh, if, if he knows me well, very well, he say, ah, no, 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 not Reverend. No, no, no. He can't do that. He has gone beyond that. But if at this stage, and with this color in my neck, I still engage in street fighting, then what does it mean? It means I am stuck in my baby, in my babyhood. I have not grown beyond there. So instead of us coming to have uh, grown to the stage when we become teachers, we still need people to be reminding us of those basic, basic things. A, a, a secondary school child is still being taught one plus one. What progress is that? Finish that statement. We have need that one teach you again, mm -hmm. which, be, which be the first principles of the oracle of God. You see? You still need to be taught the basic things, the first thing, the first, the very first things that you were taught from the beginning needed to be repeated again and again and again when you ought to have already become teachers yourself. And I've become such as as milk of milk. Of milk, yes. And not strong milk. And therefore, you cannot un understand. You cannot undo the glory of God that God wants you to demonstrate. Hey, yes. For everyone that is still behaving the way you are behaving at this stage is not skillful in the word of righteousness. He, because that person has not grown at all, he's still a baby. Verse 14, yes. Because deep revelation. Manifestation of the glory of God does not belong to babes, it belongs to who? People who have grown and have come of full age have come to the realization that they are supposed to demonstrate that glory in the first place. Even those who, by reason, especially those who, by reason of use, have exercises their senses, yes. Exercise, yes, to both good and good. praise the Lord. These are people who have paid due diligence to their spiritual growth. People who have paid the price, fasting when necessary, reading the word of God when necessary, praying when necessary, demonstrating the power of God. I pray God will give us better understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. So that is the first parameter. How much attention are you paying to the word? How much time are you paying to the word? If you are, if you are still being forced at this stage, then you are still behaving like a baby, like a little child who needs to be forced to go to school. You have not realized the importance of education. The same thing applies here. We have not realized the importance of spiritual education, through which we will be empowered to demonstrate the glory of God. But if we have grown, we will pay attention. We will spend time. Burn the midnight candle to develop our spiritual capacity. The second parameter is how much time are you devoting to prayers? How much time are you contending for what is rightfully yours? How much time are you spending to get the extra, the icing on the cake for yourself? Praise the Lord. We need to pray. We need to contend. And in First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, the scripture says, pray once in a while, right? Pray without ceasing. Pray at all times. And I always like to, to, to simplify it. When the scripture says pray at all times, it means turn everything into what? To prayers. Because it is not possible for me now to stand here and begin to pray for the next 24 hours. It's not possible. It's not practicable. God does not even expect that anyways. But still, he says, pray without ceasing. That means I must turn everything I do into prayers. For instance, maybe I'm just, uh, I just remembered my children. I said, oh God, these children are so, so, are so, so, so Lord, be with them, bless them, increase them, enlarge them, I prayed. The next moment, as I open the door of my bedroom, 
oh God, let doors of opportunities and blessings open for me in this land in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you go to the washroom, you do your business easily, you give thanks to God and say, Lord, replenish me. You are going into your car, you open the door, Father, as I go out today, let your presence go with me. This car will not become my coffin in the name of Jesus Christ. Every, you can literally turn everything. You are sweeping the house. Lord, the death in my life, the death in my family, the, the tarnish, the, the, the stains in our glory, Lord, sweep them away for us in the name of Jesus. We can literally turn everything like that into prayers. And that is what is called communion with the Holy Spirit. You are communing. You are, you are not keeping appointments with God. You are relating with the Holy Spirit. And as you continue to relate with the Holy Spirit, you will begin to know what ordinarily you should not know. There will be revelations, doors will be opening, things will be opening. You will be able to see into the spiritual world. You will be able to see into things that ordinary people will not be able to see. And by the time you get to that stage, you will see. And then the spiritual maturity will make you to do what? Zip your lips where you're not supposed to talk. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the mighty Jesus. It is minus 14 outside, but I think it should be around 20 what in the, in the house. So we should be warm. Praise the Lord once again. Amen. So we need to create time to pray. Yes, it is good to pray in the morning. It is, in fact, it is compulsory pray in the morning, pray at night. But it is not enough to keep appointments with God. We should keep a relationship. This is my wife. If I tell my wife, we can talk in the morning. And after that, until evening, before we are able to talk again. Even though we live in the same house and we, are still, we go about in the same house, we still see each other. What kind of relationship is that? We won't, we, we won't know each other. We won't blend. But every moment, my dear, every moment, my dear, she will speak her heart, I will respond, I will speak my heart, she will respond, and by that we'll be getting to know each other. Even though there will still be rough edges, but through communication, through interaction, those rough edges will be what? Smoothened out. God desires a relationship, communion, constant conversation between us and the spirit of God that is in us. If we, if, if we ignore him, no problem, he will be there quiet quiet and darkness will continue to pervade that, that kind of life. But the moment we begin to engage the Holy Spirit of the living God, you will begin to move and to act on our behalf. The third thing that we need to take note of that can tell us whether we are growing or not, then is that how much is the word of God doing or how much effect is the word of God having in your life, in my life? If the word of God is just like a story to our hearing, it is of no use. But if the word of God is transforming us, changing us from day to day, then we discover that uh, last year, if I look into my life, I can see five vices, bad characters. But, but towards the end of last year, God has helped me uh, overcome one. Is that growth or retrogression? That is growth. Now, this is the end of January is going to an end. I saw that I've been able to knock another one off. That is growth. And that's why I refer us to Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 to 26. Um, for the sake of time, maybe we should just note it. Galatians chapter 5, 19 to 26 it says, it talks about the works of the flesh and the spirit, you know, working against each other. And if you look at it, you will discover that it gave us a list of works of the flesh and works of the spirit fruit of the flesh and fruit of the spirit. I want to encourage every one of us on, on our own, in our private uh, time. Take a pencil and just look at those things. Works of the flesh, drunkenness, no, I passed that one. I, I know they drink. Uh, idolatry, I don't, I don't commit, I, I don't practice idolatry. Mark them one by one and see how many you can pass and see how many you need to work on. That is how you measure your growth. But if you look at all the works of the flesh, and you saw that all the works of the flesh are in your life, are you grown? No. But if you see like maybe 18, I was okay, fine. I've, at least I, I have been able to overcome eight. That means I still have like 10 more to go. So you can measure your growth like that. By the time you were able to deal with the help of the Holy Spirit with two, and you look and say, ah, thank God, I've been able to overcome this one too. So I still have about six to go. So you'll be able to measure your growth like that. And as you measure it, it becomes exciting. You want to do more and do more and do more so that you'll be able to clear the board. 
the same thing on the side of the work of the spirit. Ah, work of the spirit, there are about uh, seven or nine, or there are about nine, or there are about in that passage. How many of this work of the spirit do I exhibit in my life? Am I gentle? Am I showing love? Am I this? Am I that? By the time you take them and see how many you have passed, I say, ah, out of nine, I, I only have I only have three operating in my life. Ah, no, this is not past my goal. I need to struggle and make sure and pray more and ask God to help me more. And then by the time you become five, six, seven, that is what progress. That is growth. And by the time the work of the spirit begins to manifest little by little, the fruit is manifesting. And then by the manifestation of the fruit, the gift will now begin to show forth. The gift will not come until the fruits are ripe. People of God. You cannot give a fruit that you have not produced out. The fruit has to be formed in you. The orange tree has to go and produce orange before a farmer can pluck and give it out. So the fruit has to grow and be produced first before it is now becoming a gift that will be given out to people. I pray the Lord will open our eyes to see more in the name of Jesus. First Peter chapter 2 started by saying, okay, let, don't let me say, oh yeah, let's read. First Peter chapter 2, we've been referring to that passage often and often. First Peter chapter 2, before he now begins to talk about the need for spiritual for milk, the word of God. Yes? One. Yes. Therefore, Therefore, lay aside all malice. Lay aside all malice. All the seeds, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. speaking. Then verse 2 now says, As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk, the pure milk of the world, so that you may outgrow all these childish behaviors. Praise the Lord. So, if the word of God is not working in our lives, we will not be able to outgrow all these quote and unquote childish behaviors. And if we do not outgrow this childish behavior, that means we are not growing. So, if you see a Christian that is still keeping malice, he is still a baby. He has not grown. He has not grown beyond that one. But don't mock him because tomorrow he might outgrow it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, I want to round up by this. When we're talking about growth, why is it important? Why do we need to grow? Why is it important? Romans chapter 8, verses 19 through 20. It says, the earliest expectations, Romans chapter 8, 19 through 20. The earliest expectation of all creatures is for the manifestation of, of the sons of God. And these scriptures, this, yes, okay, okay. Romans 8, 19 to 20. 19. Yes. For the earnest expectation of the creature. For the great, earnest, sincere desire of all creatures. Waited for the manifestation. Is for the manifestation of you, of me. They are expecting our manifestation, yes? Of the sons of God. They are expecting us to manifest the glory of God, yes? For the creature. For all these creatures that we're talking about. Was made subject to vanity. Was made subject to vanity. No willing. Not willingly, but by reason of him, but by reason of him, who has subjected the same in hope, he has subjected the same in hope that you and I will come and demonstrate the glory to deliver it. Because to 20. Okay, to 20. Yeah. yeah. So that is the thing. It's like like I'm I'm going, I'm attending a school right now, and many a times they will give us simulated uh, uh, questions. That, okay, you guys, this is a scenario, prefer solutions to it. That, that, that's why I love the education here, unlike theory, theory, theory that we used to learn back then. They will create a scenario for you and they will expect you to think outside the box. Go on the internet, search everywhere, you won't find the solution except you are able to think outside the box. So they will create a scenario. It may not really exist, but they will create a life kind of situation that you will have to go and think and crack. So in the process of thinking, they are not trying to, to pull you down, but they are trying to like say, okay, show what you have on your inside by bringing knowledge, by bringing light, by bringing solution to this situation. 
That is what God is telling us here. That this whole world that we are seeing was subjected to vanity, was subjected to pain. The world was subjected to, 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 the, to the destruction by COVID-19. The world was subjected to darkness, not by mistake. It is because God wants to show his glory in you to redeem the time, to change situations, to change things. He wants to showcase you as an example of what he can do if people will give him a chance. The world may be upside now. This is the way the world is right now. And there's no way you can put this thing down that it will be stable. It will continue to fall. But God wants to show the world that you things can be right side up. And he's waiting to use you and I. It is until when God is able to showcase his glory that things can be the right side up in our lives that other people will now begin to come. And that is why they are waiting. They are waiting. Hey, these are the sons of God. They are the ones. Once they, once they are able to get it, I know I can get it too. Praise the Lord. I pray the glory of God will be demonstrated in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. The second thing is that we will not be able to possess our possessions if we don't grow. We cannot overemphasize this. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 2, the scripture says, a child, a small child, even if it is, if it is the heir of all the properties of his father, will still be subject to teachers. The slave of his father will still be the one that will be detecting and be commanding him. He will not be able to demonstrate the majesty of his father. Praise the Lord. A child, the heir apparent, he will not be able to demonstrate the glory and the majesty of his father. He will not be able to enter into the fullness of his possession that his father has left for him because he has not grown, he has not come of age. Praise the Lord. That's Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 to 2. Let's look it because time is running against me. I actually need to move very quickly. The third thing is that in Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 to 14, we read that the writer said he cannot communicate the mysteries the deep things of the spirit to these people, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 especially, he cannot communicate the deep things of the spirit to these people because they are not grown. So also, we will not be able to know the deep spiritual truth that we need in this world to shine and to excel if we don't grow. Praise the Lord. So we'll be missing out of the mind of God for us. We'll be missing out of the, of, the, of the blessings that God has created for us. So for us to be able to manifest that glory, we need to grow to that extent where we'll be able to handle the secrets of the things of the kingdom. Praise the Lord. And then if we don't grow, we'll be like children who will not know the right choices to make. We'll be making wrong choices. I pray we will not make wrong choices in life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 says, people who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern after they have grown. That is where I started from. It started, started from saying that they ought to have become teachers, but they need to be taught the foundational things. And, you know, they should be uh, strong people who are able to handle strong meat. And strong meat belongs to those who, by reason of use, have had their senses exercised to discern. So if we're not growing, we will not be having our senses exercised to discern what is right and what is wrong. And so we will be making wrong choices. It is that important. And lastly, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 13 through 14. We will be coming short of God's standard. And that is the worst. Falling short of God's standard in the world and then in eternity, and I pray that will not be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Ephesians 4, 13 to 14. I want us to read it as a random. So we are all come in, in the unity of, of the faith. All of us will have to come and grow to the standard and uh, to the, uh, the, the, the standard of the measure of Christ. Unity of faith, yes? And of the knowledge of the Son of God. We have to all grow to understanding what we have, who we are, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Until a perfect man. Until we all become perfect in our nature. Unto the, the measure of, of the, the stature of, of the fullness of, Christ. of Jesus Christ. Yes. That is the target that God has set for us. In this world, to demonstrate his glory and 
On the other side, when we get to him, to be able to accept us into his eternal kingdom. But if we don't grow, we will be frustrated. We will be, we will be rubbish here or not. And by that, it means that our characters will not be changing. The Holy Spirit will not be doing the work of transformation and, and renewal in us. And if the Holy Spirit is unable to change us, who else can change us? I pray the Lord will have his way in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so, summarily, the people of God, God expects us to demonstrate his glory in this world. And we have to cooperate with his spirit to be able to demonstrate the glory of God. Without the help of his Holy Spirit, through our own growth, we will not be able to achieve this great feat. And I pray the Lord will help us. And as the Lord is helping us, we will also cooperate in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All these things are for the children of God. They are not available to unbelievers. So if there's anybody under the sound of my voice, especially those who are watching us on Facebook, who has not given his life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you are not yet a child of God. You are still a slave. And you cannot demonstrate the glory of God. If you are not a child of God, you cannot demonstrate the glory of God. If you want to be a child of God, you have to come to him through the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, you as an individual, me, every one of us in the world, to the extent that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in the son will not perish but have everlasting life. So if you want to make that decision, I welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I just encourage you to pray in your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. Cleanse me from all my righteousness. Write my name in the book of life and help me to follow you. Give me your Holy Spirit that I may be your child forever and ever. And that is his will for you. He wants to do that in your life and he will do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us bow our heads for prayers. Our Lord and our God, we thank you for your word that you have sent to us this morning. We appreciate you because you have opened